So I woke up today and asked myself, what is the origin story of Valentine's Day? And so I went to Google it, and it turns out that the history of Valentine's Day is way more complicated than I thought. So today we're going to be doing a deep dive into the potential origin story of Valentine's Day. And it might not be as romantic as you think. Welcome or welcome back to Life on the French. As I said, we're doing a deep dive into the history of Valentine's Day, and it's actually really fascinating, mostly because no one can really agree on what it is. The New York Times called Valentine's Day, quote, one of those mysteries, mysterious historical or antiquarian problems which are doomed to never be solved, end quote. So people, I guess, have been asking the question, how did Valentine's Day start? Uh, since at least 1853, when this article from the New York Times was published. Um, and to be honest, uh, it's not till really the 1980s that we get a solid fact-based theory on how Valentine's Day became what we think of, uh, you know, this romantic gift-giving kind of holiday. So there's been tons of different legends and myths and romantic tales about how Valentine's Day came to be. And we're gonna be looking at all of those today. And we're also going to be looking at uh, the non-romantic origin story of Valentine's Day. So stay tuned. So let's start with the name Valentine. So Valentine uh, is a saint, but there's actually up to three potential saints that Saint Valentine could be. Uh, there are three St. Valentines, um, so and they all have kind of different uh, legends. So we're going to start with the kind of romantic, mythical versions of these different saints, and then we're going to talk about what we actually know about these known St. Valentines, um, because they're quite different stories. So one legend uh, is that there was a priest uh, who served during the third century in Rome uh, when Emperor Claudius II decided that single men uh, made better soldiers than married men and outlawed the practice of young men getting married. Um, and the priest, St. Valentine, uh, realized the injustice and married these young men uh, in secret. And because of this, once he was discovered, he was put to death. Um, that version of the legend is from history.com, like the History Channel. Uh, Britannica also has a different version of, of the same myth, uh, where St. Valentine ended up marrying these couples to spare the husbands from war, so less about the injustice of young men not being able to marry, and more about young men being sent to war. So another, uh, kind of romantic, uh, Valentine, uh, myth is that Valentine is a saint who was killed for attempting to help Christians escape uh, harsh Roman prisons where they were often beaten and tortured. And according to this legend, uh, the once he was imprisoned himself, uh, Valentine actually sent the first Valentine uh, after he fell in love with the jailer's daughter. Um, and he signed his love letter to her from your Valentine. Um, but there are a couple problems uh, with this story, this legend of Valentine. Um, one is that this is not substantiated by any of like the known Saint Valentine's actions. Uh, but also, it's really improbable um, that the jailer's daughter uh, would have been literate or that Valentine would have had access to paper and pen uh, in a jail cell. <laughs> uh, especially since in this own, in the own version of the legend, Valentine is protesting the harsh treatments of prisoners. <laughs> so this story doesn't really add up. Uh, but neither does the story about Valentine marrying different couples. Who actually is St. Valentine? Well, like I said, there are two to three acknowledged St. Valentines uh, that it could potentially be, you know, where the namesake is from. Uh, the first uh, St. Valentine uh, is said to have died in Africa along with 24 soldiers. Um, 
but that's all that we know about him. Um, so there's this group of monks called the Bolandis, Bol Bolan who are a sect of Jesuit monks uh, who whose purpose was to collect all the records of the named saints and compile them uh, based on their feast day. So they went and looked for all of the Valentines and collected all of like what they could find um, in the history and the texts and put them in a book. <laughs> And so that's the first one, but there's like nothing romantic so we don't know anything. Then there are two, one to two, and I say one to two because the Bolandists themselves think that these two different uh, Valentines might actually be the same person, um, but they kind of got separated in historical text by place. So. In one Valentine is Valentine of Tyranny, and one Valentine is Valentine of Rome. But their stories are very, very similar. So it's they think that they were once one story, and kind of through Chinese telephone became two stories. <laughs> uh, but basically, both are known for getting into an argument with non Christians. The non Christians then challenge Valentine to cure a family member. Uh, of an illness, uh, Valentine succeeded. The Christian, the non-Christians converted to Christianity, and both the family and Valentine were executed. And in both stories, Valentine was executed specifically in the style of decapitation. And then both Valentines, which is why they think it's the same, the decapitation, and then both Valentines were also supposedly buried in the same place. Um, so whether you count that as one or two Valentines, uh, it's likely that this is the Valentine that this, the feast day uh, is named after. But there's no romantic connotation. So how did Valentine's Day become romantic? Because decapitation is not romantic. <laughs> so one theory goes that uh, Valentine's Day uh, was combined kind of with the pagan festival of Lupercalalia. Lupercalalia. Um, Lupercalalia, uh, and I am probably saying that wrong, um, is, was a Roman pagan festival centered around fertility. Um, so Roman priests, not the Christian type, pagan Roman priests would uh, sacrifice a goat and a dog, uh, and then in in the the cave where allegedly Romulus and Remus were raised by the she wolf, and then they would tear the hide of the goat into strips, dip it in the sacrificial blood, and then go throughout the city and hit women with the uh, the goat blood belts. Uh, to bless them with fertility for the coming year. And then at the end of the day, all of the women would enter their names into an urn and eligible bachelors in the city would pick out a name from the urn and they would spend the holiday, or like the festival, with each other. Other versions of this say that they spent the year together uh, and potentially these trial partnerships would turn into marriage. None of the sources that I've read and all the sources for everything I've said so far and what I'm going to say are in the description down below. Uh, doubt that Lupercalalia was a festival. Uh, it seems agreed upon that that actually was a Roman festival and most of the sources agree that it did take place in February, although there is one source that says it took place, it used to take place in May and was moved to February. Um, but most people seem to agree it took place in February. Uh, so that actually did exist. Um, the part that is less clear is whether or not that festival uh, has anything to do with the romanticism of St. Valentine. So some theorists have, uh, and I, I say theorists not in like an academic sense, but kind of a, a one step removed from a conspiracy theorist, have argued that 
uh, the Pope Galatius in the fifth century uh, combined St. Valentine's Day with Lupercalia to kind of expel the pagan rituals. Um, Saint, er, Pope Gal Gal Galatius um, outlawed the celebration of Lupercalia, which at this point um, seemed less religious, more just a festival of debauchery, but you know, history is written by the victors, so who knows. Um, and basically tried to combine the uh, spirit of the celebration of fertility with Saint Valentine. Um, however, uh, the monks I was talking about before say there's no record of this actually happening. Um, a historian scholar who wrote an article on the origin of Valentine's Day in the Smithsonian Magazine uh, also says there's no link uh, to, there's no facts to back up that this was an intentional plot uh, to erase the celebration of Lupercalia uh, and combine it to St. Valentine's Day. Um, but that is, that is a theory, and as a fan of the Da Vinci Code, I enjoy theories about the Catholic Church doing weird things. So I kind of like this theory, but uh, another reason it doesn't really hold water is that Valentine's Day wasn't really celebrated as a romantic holiday until the, like, Middle Ages. Well after the 5th century when Lupercalia was outlawed. So if Valentine's Day didn't originate from a romantic St. Valentine patron of love, who doesn't exist, uh, and didn't, ex didn't come about through a combination of a pagan festival and a non-romantic St. Valentine, how did these two, how did Valentine's become romantic? So Jack B. Orich, an English professor uh, at the University of Kansas, um, argues uh, in an academic uh, article that came out in 1981 that Valentine's Day became romantic as a result of the poet Geoffrey Chaucer. Uh, he argued that there's no documented evidence of a romantic tradition linked to St. Valentine before Chaucer wrote the poems Parliament of the Fowls and The Complaint of Mars in the late 14th century. So Chaucer may have connected uh, St. Valentine to romance because of the date more than anything else. So the Feast of St. Valentine had already been established on February 14th, which is the alleged date that St. Valentine was killed, whichever St. Valentine we're talking about. Uh, supposedly they all died on February 14th. <laughs> so the Feast of St. Valentine was on February 14th. And uh, in uh, Britain in the 14th century, uh, they considered like February, mid-February to kind of be the beginning of spring because there were birds that mated at this time. <laughs> um, and plants kind of started to bloom. So he connected the mating of birds, a romantic notion, to Valentine in the poem because they happened at the same time and the poem was about love. <laughs> I know that's kind of weird and non-romantic, but from Chaucer's perspective, an added perk of saying St. Valentine or Valentine was that the name Valentine was considered to be a nice sounding name in this period of history. Um, other saints that were celebrated in mid-February uh, didn't have as much poetic appeal. <laughs> Uh, options that Chaucer had were St. Scholastica, St. Osterbertha, St. Eulalia, and St. Jormenhild. So I think we can all say thank you to Chaucer for choosing Valentine because Happy Osterbertha Day does not have the same ring to it as Happy Valentine's Day. So despite all of the evidence uh, that Mr. Orich, uh, that Jack Orich compiled in the article, uh, he said that it basically makes made no difference uh, in the eyes of the public. Um, 
In 2011, he noted that basically all the articles about Valentine's Day each year repeat the same myths, the myths I've already told you about, despite the evidence that he gathered to basically say, no, Chaucer is the origin of the romantic, linking romantic uh, ideals to Valentine's feast. Even still, uh, the popularity of Valentine's Day took a while to take off. Um, in the 18th century, uh, it was about exchanging gifts like gloves and spoons, um, according to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And uh, being someone's valentine for a whole year could often serve as a precursor to uh, marriage. In 1840s, Valentine's Day took off uh, in the U.S. because of the increased uh, paper production and printing presses, which lowered the cost of Valentine's Day cards. Uh, so this is where we get to the third part of the origin story of Valentine, which is, again, a non-romantic saint feast day, Valentine, Geoffrey Chaucer's poem about birds doing the nasty, and commercialism. <laughs> Hallmark opened in 1911, uh, and technology at this point had progressed to make valentines in color uh, with various textures even more inexpensive. Um, so it's really in the beginning of the 20th century that Valentine's Day became part of a general movement uh, to basically turn holidays into uh, opportunities for selling candy and flowers <laughs> and cards. Um, and one strategy that Hallmark used to commercialize Valentine's Day was to market to elementary school children. And you may have experienced this yourself. I know I did. Um, as kids, we would come in with a plastic or a paper bag that we would decorate, and then we would bring little cards to give to every single person in the class. So the idea being that it was no longer about receiving one sincere valentine from someone who likes you to a competition over who could get the most valentines. And you can see why this would be a good marketing strategy for Hallmark and other card companies. Um, and this is just a personal opinion, but I feel like this strategy kind of worked out long term as well, because I know myself, yeah, Valentine's Day is primarily about romantic partnerships, but I still, you know, send cards to, like, my grandma, like, my family and my friends on Valentine's Day, or at least send a message. Because when I was a kid, I didn't just send Valentines to the guy or girl that I liked. Um, so I do feel like Hallmark really nailed this strategy. So where does that leave Valentine's Day today? Like, does it really matter that Valentine's Day is based on an unromantic saint, a poet, and Hallmark? Or can we just celebrate Valentine's Day because people like to celebrate love? Um, well, I mean, despite the ongoing articles about the history of Valentine's Day, the holiday is still popular in the U.S., Britain, Canada, Australia... Uh, as well as being celebrated in Argentina, France, and Mexico, as well as South Korea. And in fact, in the Philippines, uh, it's the most common wedding anniversary, and mass weddings of hundreds of couples are not uncommon. So, I realize that the origin story of Valentine's Day is kind of a downer. It, it doesn't really feel right. I think, like, when I was looking and I was Googling uh, all this information, I wanted there to be a romantic like tale that led to Valentine's Day and basically found birds getting together, which is just not happy. Uh, <laughs> it's not satisfying. Um, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas uh, professor Elizabeth Nelson says, quote, people love the idea that there were these wonderful eras before our own time when people celebrated Valentine's Day in the most authentic way. But there was always a long and complicated history about Valentine's Day, and people actually thought it was too commercial and insincere from the very beginning, end quote. So it's no surprise that 
these journal articles who get most of their revenue from clicks uh, and in the past actually buying, you know, copies of newspapers continue to talk about these legends that didn't actually happen rather than the truth uh, because the truth leaves something to be desired. Um, and doesn't that just say a lot about the state of factual accuracy, accuracy in news reporting? But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have a favorite, like, Valentine's Day legend of all these stories, leave it in the comments down below. Uh, are you equally as unsatisfied with Valentine's Day origin as me? Uh, and if you want to see more of our content, uh, click subscribe, ding the bell button to know when we post. Most importantly, I hope you have a wonderful day and a very happy Valentine's Day. Bye!